G'day guys, welcome to my lab and to our 10th episode in our Zero to Zelda How to Make an ARPG in Godot 4 tutorial series. In this lesson, we're going to finish off creating our combat system. So we're going to give our player an attack. We're going to animate those attacks. We're going to change how damage is dealt. A whole bunch of little tweaks around the edges to finish off our combat system. So let's have a look at what your game should look like at the end of this lesson. What should our game look like at the end of today's lesson? I will chase down a magpie and show you. So now we've got some attack animations when I hit the space bar. So our player doesn't attack the magpie merely by being next to it, which is what was happening. Now we've got to actually physically attack the magpie. So hitting the space bar, I'll stop now so I can die. You can see our die animation still works. We then queue free. So by the end of this one, we should have a fully fun functional combat system with an attack, with death, with animations, the whole works. So let's get on into to it. So a quick recap, we have made our project, we've set up our project file and our tile map, we've created our player, we've given it movement and animations, we've done the same thing to our enemy, um, we've set up collisions and new tile layers, what, have we, what else have we done? We've, um, we've set up our combat system, we've almost finished that, we've used area 2Ds and signals and health and health bars and damage and death. So we're really, really close to having a, a really basic system all sorted out. We're going to get there in this so in this lesson, we will finish our combat system by giving our player an attack function and also animating that and making a few tweaks so that we no longer attack just by being next to them. Why? As always, to make our game better and more engaging, but also we need to wrap this up. We can't have our death or our um, damage happening just from being next to them. That's kind of boring in the long run, right? So we're going to change that. So we've got an attack animation and in a true Aussie fashion, our little bogan attacks with his thongs. I figure that's a good way to do it you're gonna to need to be able to understand and apply a lot of the things we've already done, right? So our skills today will be um, working with nodes, working with animations, um, working with some variables, making some tweaks to our physics process, process and things like that. So it's all stuff we've actually already done, but we're just refining it, right? And that's the way we're trying to do this. We sort of paint with broad brush strokes in the earlier episodes and we slowly refine that detail over time. So you're getting a really good understanding of the overall picture before getting stuck down in the minutiae of making something really good. So that's our skills for today. You're gonna to need to understand and apply a lot of the things we've already done. So by the end of this lesson, you will have a completed combat system um, that can fight, that can um, kill the magpie or be killed. Um, and you've got those animations for, for all of those scenarios. So it's going to be a complete combat system by the end. All right, so let's jump into Godot and let's get our player script up in front of us. So the first thing we're going to need to do in this particular lesson is get some more variables into our player. I know we've got a lot there already. We're going to keep adding some. So our player needs um, a method for uh, knowing whether it's attacking or not and also we need to set up an attack timer so we need to be able to track how long it has been since our last attack and things like that and the way we're going to do that is with these particular variables so after our is dead variable let's add in three new ones we're going to have a variable called is attacking and that will also be a true false statement we're going to add in our attack timer and set that to zero and we're going to add in our attack duration and set that to half a second all right, so once you've got those three variables in, scroll down to your physics process function. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in some more stuff here as well. So we're gonna add in, we're gonna use some of those variables we just made, right? So is attacking. So if we are attacking, we wanna set our attack timer to plus or equal delta, which is those ticks. Um, if our attack timer is greater than or equal to our attack duration, so if our attack timer has gone past that 0.5 seconds, then we want to turn attacking back to false and set it back to zero. So we've added two things. We've added th um, three new variables up here, is attacking, attack timer, and attack duration. And then we've made use of those down here saying, if we are attacking, um, we want to track how much time has passed. And if um, the half second has gone, then we reset everything back to where it was and then we start again because it's in our physics process remember this is running basically every frame so we work our way through that so those are the first two things we need to do uh, in our player script but uh, they are not the only thing all right so we've added those variables we've added our little bit of uh, attacking logic what i want to do now is go down beneath our update animation so down here before our update health function um, and I am going to add in a new function there to look for that spacebar press. And if we're pressing the spacebar, we set our is attacking to true and reset that timer. So we just need to add that one in there as well. We shouldn't need to actually map um, the spacebar key because UI select is already um, 
a, a map to the space bar. So we don't need to create a new thing and call it attack and do all that. We can just go, if you are select is pressed, all right? Okay, so we're still in our player script. There's one more thing I wanna do there before we go and make our attack animations, and that's we wanna handle our attack animation in our script. So in our update animation function, which we moved a whole bunch of code to last lesson, we've got this if is dead return. Underneath that, we're gonna add in some more stuff to handle our um, player attacking. So we just wanna come down underneath our is dead, if is dead, then return, and we're gonna add in this as well. So if is attacking, if our last direction on the Y is less than zero, we want to apply our attack up. So that's talking about if we are going into the negative Y, which is going up the screen, remember? So it's opposite to a normal graph. If we're going um, negative one, negative two, negative three, then we're going to attack up, right? Because that's the way the player will be facing. If we're going to do it the other way, zero, one, two, three, four, then we want to attack down. Um, and with our X, if we're going towards the right of the screen, that's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Um, but then we can flip that if we're going the other way the zero one two three kind of thing right so there's some attack animation things next thing we really need to do is um, work on our magpie script as well as making our players attack animations so um, let's do our attack animations next then we'll do our player script before we actually do our attack animation i just realized we've got a little uh, error i need to fix here this return should actually be there all right so i'll save that um, and now it's time to do animation. So hopefully you remember how to do that. You need to go into the animated sprite 2D. You need to create three new ones. I'm not gonna do it on screen because I think you should know how to do it by now, right? We've done it several times. So set up your attack up, attack down and attack right. Um, make sure you use you know, the correct sprites and all that sort of stuff. Make sure they're not on loop. You don't want these animations to loop. You just want them to play once. Um, and once you got that done, we're going to edit our magpie script. All right, so get your animations done, jump into your magpie script, and we will see you in the next uh, little clip. All right, so our magpie script does have a lot to get through and hopefully we get it all done in order and it doesn't get too confusing. So what I wanna do first, just like we did with our other um, player script, we wanna add our variables first. And the variables are basically the same. We're gonna add a damage timer, um, we're gonna add a damage interval, we're gonna add a damage from player timer and a damage from player interval, so it's a little bit different. Um, we're also gonna add in our is, is attacking one as well, which we did before, so make sure you get those ones copied down. Um, after you've got those in, the next thing we want to do is come down to our um, physics process and add this in at the start. So before that update health, we're going to add this in if player in range, damage from player timer, so we're counting. Um, if the damage from player timer is greater than the damage from player interval, we take off some health, we print um, what the magpie's new health is, and then we reset that timer. So we've got to add that in at the start so that our magpie takes damage. Keep scrolling down. The next thing we need to do is to add in this if player in range, blah, blah, blah. So this is also some of our damage handling. This is to actually take off some health from our player. So player.health um, equals uh, or minus 10, right? So we're taking off some health from our player when uh, these criteria are met. So that's the next one. After that, we need to add a little clause here at the start of our update animation. So if is dead or is attacking, return. So we don't want to run our normal animations when we've got these happening. So that's the next bit. Keep you on going down. We need to add this line in for our um, player in range and sweeping. So we're gonna add in is attacking equals true before the return from this call here. All right, so this is just saying that when this is going on, our magpie is attacking, makes sense. We do, however, want to turn it off again. So after that's done, we do the return, then we come back across so we're in line here and we turn it back to false. All right, where are we up to next? Uh, okay, next thing I would like to do is remove our health equals health take 20 from our on magpie hitbox entered. So we don't want our player to deal damage just by touching our magpie anymore. We want it to have to be from hitting them with the thong. So we don't need this anymore. We can just delete it. Um, and after that, I think that's everything we want to do in our um, magpie script as well. So let's save what we've done and let's go and have a test. All right, so let's test it. We should be pretty much there now. We should have our combat all done. So we're just going to test, see if we've missed anything. So we've still got our walking animations are working, our attacking animations are working. Let's go and pick a fight. 
Got to be a magpie around here somewhere. There's one. All right, so straight away, yeah, yep, that's working perfectly. So there's a timer on now, so we don't just die instantly. Um, and I've got to use my attack to kill the magpie, and the magpie kills me as well. It's all working perfectly. Excellent. So let's have a look at uh, our must mate. So what must you get done in this lesson to keep up? Well, you're gonna have to add the fight function um, and move the damage control system from the hitbox to the fight animation, uh, sorry, to the fight function, and you're gonna need to animate that player attack. Um, what you may like to do is start expanding your tile map some more. And remember when you do that, you need to adjust your camera limits. Um, and things that you um, might like to do, well, you might want to add some new enemies using the logic we've been working on here to add some ground-based enemies or a different sort of flying enemy. Or like I was talking about before, you could try and add um, new versions of the magpie. So not just copying the same magpie in again, but creating a whole new scene for a new magpie, giving that magpie a different territory, things like that. So make sure you try and incorporate some of that non-linear progression um, and gating that we talked about in earlier lessons. So just keep in mind those theories from the original Zelda and how you can implement them as you expand your world. So to debrief, we finished making our combat system. Um, hopefully you've also been engaging in some of the, the may and the might. So you've expanded your world a bit, maybe even added some new enemies. In our next lesson, we're going to add a friendly non-player character. We're going to give that character and our character some dialogue. Um, and we're going to make a little cave to transition into, just like in the opening scene or the opening little stanza there of the first Legend of Zelda. So we're going to have a, a cave to transition into. We're going to have a player to talk to or a character to talk to and um, um, some sort of dialogue there. And the quote I want to leave you with this week is from JFK, and it is that too often we enjoy the comfort of opinion without the discomfort of thought. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.